Tech Today is back with a bang this festive season in the battle of flagships. Which one comes out on top? Is it the iPhone 14 Pro Max or the newly launched Pixel 7 Pro? Which one is a better bang for your buck this Diwali? Also, where are you shopping this Diwali? Is it in the metaverse? We're going to check that out as well. And most importantly, what is on your festive shopping wish list? All that and a lot more. I'm your host Ayush Alavadi and this is going to be an absolute cracker of an episode of Tech Today. If you've been saving up for a new flagship device this festive season, then Tech Today has you covered. Of course, we have the iPhone 14 Pro Max, the latest and greatest from Apple. But then Apple has competition from the US here in India and it happens to be a company called Google who has returned to India with the flagship Pixel 7 Pro. So when you're talking about design, they both look distinctly different. The camera bump here is very prominent, but then these guys have an entire different unit housing the cameras over here. It's really subjective. I really think this looks very cool. When you're placing it on a surface, Surprisingly, both of them don't wobble too much. The iPhone wobbles a little bit more, but that's only external beauty that we're talking about with these devices. That's very subjective. What powers these devices? This is Apple's Pride, the A16 Bionic chip. It's gotten much better than last year's iPhone. But then Google has its own tensor now called G2. Both of them are not relying on other chip makers. They're doing this in-house. And if you believe all these Geekbench scores and online YouTube reviews, you'll see that the iPhone does a far better job on these parameters. But if you're using these phones with their implementation of stock Android, what is stock Android? It's exactly how Google wanted you to experience their software prowess out of the box. And of course, iOS in this sort of ecosystem that Apple has created, very different approaches but if you're talking about, well, G2 versus A16 and getting geeky about it, this is 12 GB RAM, I think this is 6 GB RAM, but it doesn't make much of a difference because it's very snappy. Both phones with the animations are amazing. The time that we've been using both devices, they haven't crashed on us. And you always keep getting updates on both these stock software devices, so to speak. Okay, let me try this. We're going to play a no copyright soundtrack here on the iPhone. Okay, that was the iPhone. Now let's see what the Pixel 7 Pro is like. When you listen to the sound output on these speakers, the iPhone 14 Pro Max is a clear winner. Much richer, much more quality sound coming out of these speakers. The speaker system here is subpar if you want to compare it to the iPhone. It can beat a lot of Android manufacturers and I've often noticed it on Android phones that the speaker systems aren't always at par with the iPhone. Over here as well, the iPhone 14 Pro Max wins by a country mile. If you're an iPhone fanboy or an Android fanboy, then we must address the elephant in the room, which is all about software. This comes with stock Android, Android 13 out of the box. And it is fascinating in terms of some of the things that you can do. This comes with iOS 16. It's refined, it's classy, and it's the OG. But of course, this is confined to an iOS ecosystem. These devices, as always, the ecosystem argument. This is stock Android in all its splendor. And there are many things about this device that make it even more special than other phones which come close to stock Android. The Pixel has inherent advantages. For instance, now within the Google Messages app, you can transcribe audio messages. Additionally, you can use your phone to answer or decline incoming phone calls with a single word. Yes, I love taking selfies for my Instagram and you can always reach out to us on our social media handles. But when you have two of the best camera systems in the world from Apple and Google, then you have to try out the cameras. We're going to do an extensive review on this show, this very segment. But right now what I can tell you is a little bit of theory and then we'll go into the practice mode. Theory-wise, they both have a triple camera system. The Pixel 7 Pro houses a 50 megapixel wide camera, 48 megapixel telephoto and a 12 megapixel ultra wide. The iPhone 14 Pro Max 
isn't very far behind and they've actually upgraded their camera sensors finally it's not just 12 ultra wide and 12 telephoto and 12 primary They've now bumped it up to a 48 megapixel primary sensor as well. And we know in social media, there's always the Pixel gang or Team Pixel and then of course the shot on iPhone gang. This has been the most consistent device when you're taking photos and very good for videos as well. In fact, we're shooting this on an iPhone. What's the video like? Let us know. Now let's get back to our studio camera. Look, the iPhone is fantastic for video, but Pixel has tried to upgrade that as well. Why should I be right here in the studio telling you all of this? Let's take you outside for a quick spin showing you what the photos and videos on both devices are all about. I'm smiling because I'm holding the Pixel 7 Pro and it's still standing in this verdict. The last man standing happens to be the Pixel 7 Pro at half the price of an iPhone 14 Pro or a 14 Pro Max. This is a very enticing option this festive season. You're getting the best software experience on an Android phone yet. You're also getting really cool features, maybe not Dynamic Island, but a fantastic camera as well. In many tests, the Pixel can do as well or better when it comes to taking photos on your smartphone and that's saying a lot for a phone which costs half as much as other flagships. If you are not in the Apple ecosystem and are looking for an Android device, this is the best Android device yet and I think a very strong buy for the festive season. Well, the first half of the show which you've been watching is all about us geeking it out in the battle of the flagships, the iPhone 14 Pro Max and the Pixel 7 Pro. If you're spending your hard-earned money, we wanted to ensure that you make the right purchase decision this festive season. In fact, let us know, tag us on social media and let us know which one you picked up. Is it, well, the Apple world or the Android world? That said, the second half of the show is us turning on the festive switch and coming up with a cracker of a surprise for you. Don't miss the second half. Everyone's busy finding what's trending. You're busy finding out why. India Today, for those who research before reacting. Download the India Today app now.
Welcome back to Tech Today. I'm your host Ayush Alavadi. Now each week you guys write in on Instagram, on Facebook and Twitter asking a bunch of technology questions and queries and we love to answer them. This week we thought let's turn the tables and ask you the questions. In fact, one big question. What's that one piece of technology that you've been saving up for this Diwali? What's on your Diwali shopping wish list? My colleague Rachna is out in Mumbai looking for some answers. Hustling streets, bustling sweet shops, nip in the air, lit up towers, it's officially the best time of the year. Diwali is here and unlike every year, I do not plan to pass on the stale son papdis to my friends and family this year. So I've decided to turn to people of Mumbai and find out what's on their wish list for Diwali. What is it that they're planning to give their loved ones? Let's find out. I would want to buy an iPhone 14 for myself because uh, it's it has such a good uh, camera technology and I would like to cap uh, take good photos and capture moments in my life. This Diwali I want to give my parents an iPhone iPhone 14 mostly or iPhone 13. Yeah, I want to give my dad an iPhone just like that uh, because he always wanted a good phone uh, for his work. Anything close to an iPhone 14 Pro Max I hope that comes true. So sure, why not? Buy a MacBook, like for my further studies and also like for my field that I'm going to take in future for that like a laptop is must. So I'm looking forward to buy a Mac. Is there a reason you choose Apple? I just am obsessed with that brand. You can say I like Apple. So I want to give my mother a MacBook Pro so she's studying for exams so it will be easy for her. Well, clearly the youth have spoken and Apple is the answer. Apple seems to be the most popular answer right now. Let's find out more. What is that one piece of tech or one thing that you want to give to yourself or somebody that you love? Um, so I would like to give my mother a noise smartwatch because she can read all the notifications and track her fitness and everything via that smartwatch. Um, I would like her to buy a smartwatch for myself. It can be of any brand as long as it has the features that I want. I would prefer a smartwatch because like whenever I work out or exercise, it helps me track my pulse rate or even my steps. Uh, I would like a gaming computer uh, because I like to game MSI gaming computer. It's a new gaming laptop because it has a better processor. So it'll be faster to edit videos and get some fun content out. So what is it that you want to give to yourself and your parents this Diwali? So I'd like to give myself nano leaf panels. They are uh, RGB panels that are used to spruce up your house. And for my parents, I'd like to buy them. Mostly for my mom, I'd like to buy her a Dyson vacuum cleaner because they're significantly better than most of them. They're pretty cool. High tech, pretty expensive though. So me being a makeup artist, I would firstly go for Dyson because I myself get ready a lot so I need to be presentable so Dyson of course and my mom is a hairstylist same for her from an iPhone 14 to a Dyson air wrap to electric chandeliers these were the people of Mumbai and their Diwali wish list what is on your wish list do let us know in the meantime let's just ask Ayush what's on his wish list for this Diwali well, Rachna has given us a good idea of what you guys really want, which gadgets you want for Diwali, but where are you doing your shopping? Could it possibly have been in the metaverse? Well, Flipkart has launched Flipverse and there was only a trial sort of a project for this week. But can this be scaled up by other brands? Can they use technology to make the user experience seamless and much better? Akanksha files this special report. We know you're all busy with Diwali shopping. But what if I told you, this festive season, you could shop from the metaverse? Yes, you heard it right. E-commerce platform Flipkart has launched the Flipverse, a metaverse-based shopping platform which can be accessed via the Flipkart app. Let's see how it works. First, open the Fire Drops by Flipkart website on your desktop or your laptop. Then, click Enter Metaverse. Scan the QR code that's visible to you on the screen with your cell phone. This would open the Fire Drops app. Select Flipverse and then select a username and an avatar for yourself. And you've entered the metaverse. As you can see, they have kicks from Puma, wearables from Noise, beauty products from Nivea, bags from Lavi, and even two wheelers from TVS. Other brands showcasing their products are Campus, VIP, Himalaya, Butterfly India, and Tokyo Talkies. Now let's talk about the user experience. 
Flipverse is only compatible with Android cell phones. So Apple users, you might have to skip this metaverse shopping experience. Also, it takes a considerable amount of time to load on our cell phones, in a way hampering the overall experience. Moreover, after exploring the Flipverse, we have concluded that it's a decent experiment so far, but it's not very immersive. And if you promise us a metaverse, we expect it to be a lot more immersive. Maybe like shopping experiences that are offered by Gucci, Coca-Cola or H&M, right in the metaverse. Flipverse was opened for everyone from 16th October and would wrap up by 23rd October. We hope that Flipkart comes with an upgraded version of the Flipverse soon. What did you think? Do let us know in the comment section. Back to you, Ayush. 70 to 80,000 rupees for a pixel. This one costs nearly 150,000 rupees. Why do we shell out the big bucks for these mini computers in our pockets? Is it because we like the way they look? Is it because they're aspirational products? The shallow depth of field you get on the cameras, really cool cameras on these devices, good video recording, good displays, multitasking with the Tensor G2 chip or the A16 Bionic chip. Why do we shell out the big bucks, Nabila? Is it really worth it? Well, Ayush, you do have a point here, but what if I told you an iPhone with none of these features that you just mentioned here would cost you probably a house here in Delhi? You heard that right? An unopened iPhone from 2007, that's over one and a half decades ago from today, has been auctioned off for almost $40,000. That's almost 32 lakh rupees. So the US-based LCG auctions that had put this vintage iPhone for sale said that 28 bidders had shown interest in buying this iPhone, starting the bid all the way from $2,500, which is about 2 lakh rupees, and finally closed it at $39,339, that is close to 32 lakh rupees. Also back in 2007, this was priced at around $599, which as per today's conversion rate is about 49,000 rupees, and was the same iPhone model that saw long queues. But remember, in 2007, there was no Siri, no amaze quality camera and other enhanced features that an iPhone now has. So, one does wonder, why is this ancient iPhone being sold for such an exorbitant price? Well, that's because more than a phone, this is now a collectible. After all, this was the same model that changed the definition of smartphones that Steve Jobs himself sold this phone and this phone was awarded the time invention of the year back in 2007. But whatever, this is not the first time a vintage Apple product has fetched way more than it had originally retailed for. Last year, one of the first Apple computers from 1976 was auctioned off for close to 3 crore rupees when its original retail price, nearly four decades ago, was 55,000 rupees. What's even more interesting is that the computer was still functioning perfectly fine. Well, Ayush, what do you think? Would you have paid this amount for a vintage, unopened iPhone? Would you want to consider this as a gift option, considering Diwali is around the corner and you have your colleagues always looking up to you? Well, it's my birthday also, you know what I mean? Well, Nabila, from one broke tech geek to a top television anchor, I thought my presence would be a present. Okay, I'm not going to be miserly. We'll have a nice little Tech Today party at the end of it and you can always tune into our social media handles for all the behind the scenes. Thank you so much for tuning in to this special festive episode of Tech Today. We're all wishing you a very happy Diwali and a prosperous new year. And we hope you stay tuned to your favorite technology show in the days to come. I'm your host, Ayush Alavadi, saying thank you. Until next week, adios. Touch screen enables users to interact directly with the display monitor. 
They become a feature of everyday life at supermarket checkouts, ATM machines, on GPS devices and most commonly with tablets and smartphones. There are two common types of touchscreen technology. One is called recitive. Two transparent sheets are coated with a conducting material and separated by tiny dots called spacers. When the two layers are pressed together, they create an electrical circuit that indicates the point of contact. Uses include cash and ticket machines. The other capacitative touch technology is most commonly used in tablets and smartphones. A layer of insulating material like glass is coated with a fine grid of electrodes thinner than human hair. This is sandwiched between an outer protective glass layer and an LCD screen that displays the images. As the human body is also an electrical conductor, touching the screen with a finger results in a change in the electrostatic field, indicating the point of contact. More recently, smartphone manufacturers have moved towards so-called on-cell and in-cell technologies. On-cell locates the touch technology onto the outer glass, whereas with in-cell, the touch sensors are built into the actual display panel. Both approaches allow devices to be thinner and lighter. New applications for touchscreen technology now include unlocking smartphones using a biometric fingerprint scanner. When a capacitive sensor is activated, it takes a high-resolution snapshot of a fingerprint, which is compared against the information stored inside the phone. If the unique characteristics in the arches, loops or whorls match the device, it will unlock. India Today. Hey, good evening, viewers, and thanks so much for being with us on India Today. This is Shaiti Narula. Let's begin with the headlines first. In a massive recruitment drive, Prime Minister Modi today inaugurated India's first Rosgar Mela, under which 10 lakh vacancies are going to be filled. In the first tranche of the scheme, 75,000 people were handed over appointment letters. 75,000 people have given a 